everybody, as you can see, my serger is disgusting. I mean, it is full of gunk, full of lint, full of all kinds of fabric balls, and it's dusty as crap. Like, I let it get really, really, really bad. And so it, I've just been doing a whole lot of sewing and I just neglected to take care of it the way that I needed to. But now that I'm getting ready to um, do some cleaning on it, I thought that I would share how I clean it. And also to let you see the before and the after. So the first thing that I'll go over are the supplies. So obviously you need a very disgusting surgery. You'll need a sewing machine oil. This is the one that came with my machine. You'll need a screwdriver to um, take off your stitching plate here. You'll need a couple of brushes. Um, this is the one that I love to use, that's why it's so dirty. This came with one of my machines, I don't even remember which one, but I like this one and I use a smaller one as well. And these attachments in this hose is actually a little vacuum kit that I ordered online. And this is what I do to really, really suck up the, the dirt out of my machine. So first things first, do not use any canned air. If you have a can of air in your hand, getting ready to press the trigger, put it down, kick it across the room, and don't ever touch it again when it comes to your sewing machine, okay? The, the reason is, is that the canned air is going to push this dirt further into your machine. And also, even though it's air, to get that propellant situation it has going on, it has to uh, have some type of moisture, some type of chemical in there, and that moisture can get in your machine and cause rust. So no canned air, okay? So first things first, you'll want to pop off your presser foot, just to get it out of the way. And then you'll want to remove your threads from your machine. And now taking a brush, remove all of that gunk very carefully. And I like to brush everything. And I brush it out, not back towards my machine. Ooh, child, trifling. I am trifling for this. My goodness. And also a pair of tweezers helps as well, getting into those nooks and crannies. Now, on sometimes you can take off your stitch plate. I really don't like to fool with my stitch plate if I don't really have to. So the way that I've cleaned my machine that I'm showing you right now is how it gets done. Resist the urge to blow into there, okay? I know it's gonna be tempting. I know it. Just don't do it. Because you're defeating the purpose of everything you're doing. So brush, brush, brush. See, it's starting to look better already. Ooh, wee. See, we're starting to see metal and not dust. And then you can use the small brush for the really, really, really small pieces. You can flick some stuff out. This one gets really good in the grooves of that stitch plate. Brush everything down and out.
Okay, so now that I've gotten most of it out, it's time to break out my vacuum cleaner with my attachments. So here's how I use the vacuum attachment. So this is a full-size vacuum hose. Then I put this attachment on. Then this one. And then you can pull that cap off. And this is where you can attach the hose. And put a little elbow grease into it. And now you've got a little suction situation going on here. I'm just gonna turn on my vacuum and I will mute this for you but I'm gonna turn on my vacuum and start working on my machine. So even though I've got this muted I'm gonna show you that my vacuum cleaner is actually picking up lint. So now let's get to work on the actual machine. So I've used this little narrow attachment here, but I'm gonna use this one right here for with the brush um, to help me finish up in there. So I'm just gonna switch that out. Pop, pop, pop it in. And turn my vacuum back on. Then I'll also go in um, with a dry paper towel or, you know, some other kind of a, a piece of scrap fabric, just something that doesn't um, leave lint behind. And I'll wipe off the surface as best as I can. looking so much better already. Okay, so we're looking pretty good now. So I need to put a little oil in my machine. Where I'm going to oil is right here at the base of where this looper shaft thingy goes up and down. And so that way when it goes up and down, it's getting oil right there. Use a sewing machine oil, just a little bit. And if you have never used this before, um, do a little test on a piece of um, paper towel to see how much oil comes out with what whatever pressure, because you don't want to overdo it, okay? So I've got a drop there and I'm just gonna work it up and down. Get it a little lubricated. And so just look into your machine to see if there's anything that kind of slides up and down that can be oiled, some type of pivot point. Um, I don't mess with my knife. I don't want any oil on that. 
Um, I don't know if that is correct, okay? Um, if you are unsure, take your machine to your dealer, check your manual, and ask um, someone who is a professional at doing this, okay? I'm just showing you what I do at home to keep my machine in tip-top shape. Now for the outside, I take my towel, and you can moisten this, I think, just a tad bit. Um, I really don't like to fool with much moisture on my machine. So I just wipe it off. And then there's some more wiping you can do around your thread. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I do maintenance on my serger. Um, I do take my serger to my dealer ever so often, maybe about once or twice a year for maintenance. Um, you can also use a paper towel or some small narrow piece of cloth to clean inside these tension discs, but I really don't like to fool with what I can't see. So I don't tend to do this myself, um, but for the most part, I think it's most important to keep your insides cleaned and oiled. So this is how I do it. I will link to all of the supplies that I used in this video in the info box below. And if there's anything else that you like to do to keep your serger cleaned and maintained, make sure to leave a comment below so that everyone can benefit from that information. All right, I'll see you in the next video.